Hi everyone, this is John. I'm in LA with my medium format camera. Um, I just got it refurbished and it's all ready to go to do a lot of trials, but I'm just trying to have fun with this. Um, one thing I wanted to do today was to compare films, black and white films. The reason I bought this was just to kind of keep things simple, just uh, one lens. I don't have multiple lenses, just have one lens. I was just thinking to do black and white. And I went to go buy some black and white film. There's Ilford, there's Kodak, there's Raleigh, there's Fuji. Um, I was like, which one do I get? And each one has its own different varieties. So I remember a couple from when I was in film school to try out. So I'm, I'm here with the three different types. Uh, it's a Kodak 100, T-Max, an Ilford Delta 100, and um, a Raleigh 100. And um, when I was thinking of films, I know it's sort of like Instagram. You get different filters or profiles. Um, some with much more contrast, some much more flat. So I, I want to know which film to use for different situations or if there's a one um, film that's good for kind of everything. Um, when I shoot in digital, I shoot in a flat format to where there's not a lot of contrast, so I can add it later in post with Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever. So uh, I'm just walking around LA, um, trying to just find some classic spots um, that are popular for shooting as the mailman comes, uh, hopefully bringing me a delivery of something good. Hopefully he doesn't go postal. Um, Yeah, so here we go. So I'm starting off with this Ilford Delta 100, and I picked a really contrasty scene where it's just super bright and then just super dark really fast. So partially I'm just waiting for the clouds to come back in and soften it a little, but uh, in doing a film comparison, it's probably best to have things be consistent as possible. Um, this isn't scientific by any means. I, I'm not measuring grains and exact exposures, but I'm just gonna have the same for each uh, film. Um, I'm standing in the middle of the street, so I don't recommend doing this at home or out on the street, but um, I'm stupid, so I get away with it. Uh, so first I'm gonna meter for the dark. So using the zone system, um, wherever I meter, it's, it's telling me middle gray. It's a, I'll show in a graphic here. And to, if I go by F11, I'm shooting at F11. Um, it's telling me 60th of a second. Now that's gonna be just this gray, which might be all right, but I wanna darken it a little bit because the sky is gonna be more blown out. So at F11, it's suggesting 60th of a second. So if I shoot two stops under, it'll bring the sky in a little bit. And I want to get that contrast. So. I'm doing the Raleigh. Everything's the same, except it doesn't work. Dark slide. And then Kodak.
for my next location, I'm going to this bu uh, famous building in LA. Um, it's going to be indoors, and security is pretty tight there. So they don't allow filming of any kind unless with the permit. So I'm just going in, pretending I don't know anybody. I'm my friend doing camera. Um, again, I picked an indoor place just to have sort of flat lighting and with available light. So again, I have the Ilford, Kodak, and Raleigh. And so here we go. Now that I have the film back, I'd like to do a side-by-side -side comparison for you on the screen. Um, one issue though I found was on one of my film backs um, with the Kodak film, um, there was a winding issue where um, on two of my backs, if you just turn this knob, it'll wind the film to the next shot. But on the other one, there's a little knob you have to hold and, and then turn the knob, the main knob, and I'm saying knobs a lot, you knob. And what was happening, happening was that the film is not advancing because this lever that you use to also turn the film also locks the film so you can do a multiple multi-exposure. And I didn't want to do that, but I didn't know I was doing that. So on one of the shots, it's sort of ruined. So there's two shots in one, and I'll show it to you. And keep in mind, this uh, comparison isn't scientific. Um, I did my best to keep the exposure the same. I didn't change any settings between one shot to the next. So just to give a good idea of what the film's doing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's go into Lightroom. I have all the pictures preloaded and I've colored them to say uh, purple is Raleigh. Blue is Ilford, and so on. Yellow Kodak. And right away I want to show you the first photo that uh, this is the Kodak. And so as you can see, it combined two pictures. So it's kind of neat, but it's sort of unusable for our test here. But what you could do is just turn, but it's hard to know what's being darkened and what's being lightened by one photo or the other. So I just keep it as a reference to you say, yeah, make sure you wind the film. But truth be, truth be told, I probably won't use that film back anymore because it's too uh, unpredictable. So let's get rid of that from this collection. So first off is this uh, stair band, um, railings. This is the Raleigh film, the ISO is 100, or is 100. And I just give it a full screen effect. So the next one is Ilford. So with the same settings from one shot to the next, and it's probably five seconds or 10 seconds between the two, um, I'm noticing on the Ilford that the highlights are a little more blown out. There's more detail in the shadows because it's exposing uh, brighter. So something to keep in mind when using Ilford um, and this Raleigh, I feel like it's a little more balanced. Because the idea is when I, so, since I'm in Lightroom, I can show you if I really wanted to play with this photo, I can bring the, the shadows out more, bring down some of the highlights. I'm not doing anything crazy right now, I'm just picking stuff. You know, that gives me more work, room to work with. Where the Hilford, I feel like these these highlights are blown out. So I can probably try to recover some of them with the uh, Lightroom here. But um, 
I feel like with editing Latitude, the Raleigh film is giving me actually a little more to work with. Now I wish I had that Kodak as a comparison, but I have to do it another time. Anyway, so for this shot, uh, I think I'll stick with uh, beginning Raleigh film from now on as far as dynamic range. Or I can keep in mind that when I'm shooting with the, if I have the Ilford film, whatever my light meter reading is saying, I can underexpose it a little bit to cut down on those highlights. Now here's the next comparison with this banister handrail thing. Um, this is just the Raleigh and the Ilford. And I don't see much difference. I like both of them. But I think I like the Raleigh just a little better. Just thinking out of the box, straight out of the box, uh, without having to think of another step. Because, you know, when you're using a manual camera or all the settings you have to think about, having one less step to think about is in my opinion, nice. So in this next shot, here's the Kodak. So I was in a spot with a really high dynamic range where it's super bright and then super dark. Now this is the Kodak. Let's see, wait. This is the Kodak, Ilford, and Raleigh. So let's start with Kodak. So right, the, right away, you can see there's some detail there, but you still see some clouds, even the airplane. Where on the Ilford, again, same setting, nothing different. Um, this is a little, you can see more detail, but the clouds are blown out. On the Raleigh, it's slightly darker, so you get those clouds. So straight out of the box, I think the Kodak's actually better for dynamic range. And the settings, are all, remember, are all exactly the same. So going into editing, you can bring out some of that detail and get more latitude. Because when it comes to editing, having some latitude, I don't have a dark room, I'm just using Lightroom. So can know what to expect. And that's sort of the, the knowing what to expect and having control is what the, you know I think gives you a professional feel. So at the end of the day I think I'm liking this Kodak better. Um, more extreme. So, just a quick comparison. Kodak. Out of the three, I like Kodak and Raleigh. So now I wish for this photo if I could have made the Kodak work. Along with this photo, now I'd be curious how the Kodak would have held up. But here, uh, I'm liking it. Well, that's it for now. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.